All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Lots of Fun. Thanks for coming. This is by far the coolest room I've ever presented in. So if you could maybe take some pictures of me and tweet them with the hashtag Lots of Fun, that would accomplish two things. My mom would be forever grateful, and my dad would actually believe me when I tell the story. My name is Luca Bandini. I am a solutions consultant based in London, and today it will be my pleasure to be your guide through the wonderful world of level of detail expressions. People in our industry, people like us, are famous, they're known for their ability to harness the power of data, to generate insights and drive decision making at any level in every industry. Are we not? We're also sometimes known for our questionable ideas over what we consider cool and in this case fun. I, for example, enjoy in my free time, of course, to hack my favorite data visualization tool to draw pictures of my face using polygons. Oh, my lord. OK, on a slightly more serious note, who has used level of detail expressions before? Raise your hand. OK, I'm seeing a lot of hands goes up, go up. That's good. For those of you who consider themselves new to level of detail expressions, I just want to give you a fair warning that this is not an introductory session where we try to understand what LOD expressions are. This is the session where we try to understand the hidden mechanics and mechanisms behind LOD expressions and how we can use them to our advantage to unlock some more advanced use cases and analytical um, features in Tableau. That said, uh, I don't want you to run away screaming if you don't consider yourself an expert. Whether you are already proficient with LOD or a, a newbie, um, hopefully, you know, we'll go through a lot of examples today, hopefully you will find something that is interesting to you. And there's no need for you guys to follow every single step and try to replicate and take notes and take pictures of what I'm doing on screen. I want you guys to focus on the core things or on the core concepts that I'm trying to explain today. And the session is recorded. You will receive the material. Hopefully, you will find something that you will want to try and recreate in your daily job. And you will be able to do that. Follow the recording. Uh, try to reverse engineer the workbook. So no need to take notes and try to follow every single step today. OK, just take a look at what we can expect to get out of the session today. If you've been using Tableau for a while, you've probably realized that out of all the things that you can do, 95% are either very, very easy to do or very, very easy to Google. We have a fantastic community. We have partners that are posting a lot of content to help you out in your analytical journey. The remaining 5%, though, can make you go crazy trying to find the right query to, to ask Google for some guidance or try to come up with, with a solution yourself. So my goal for today is for you guys to leave needing to Google a little bit less, being able to contribute to the community with some of your ideas, and being able to unlock, again, those more advanced analytical use cases using LOD. OK, let's dive into the uh, examples here. Um, just to warm you guys up, I'm going to start with something easy. But it doesn't make it less um, impactful analytically. I love this example. This is one of the uh, original use cases for LOD. I was talking to one of, my, of our developers while preparing the session, and they told me that um, they built LOD with this thing in mind. I, I recommend this to all of my customers. It's so cool. So what are we looking at here? We have three very simple bar charts. We have units, products that we sell, and we have how many units we have sold in every industry, and how many free units have we given to our customers within those industries. Now, our management has set a threshold of 6%. And if we're giving these customers or within these industries too many free units above 6%, that's not good. That's not good for the business, so it gets flagged. Now, in a view like this, traditionally, normally, I could only see the data aggregated at the level of industry. That's what we have in the view, right? So here I can see, for example, that in agriculture, overall, we're given more than 6% for units. That is not good. That is flagged with the orange KPI. Nice and easy. But what if overall in an industry, I'm doing OK. Overall, I'm not giving away too many free units. But there are some customers within that industry that are being given too many free units, too much discount. How do I see that? That's where LOD can come in and help by helping us define the level of detail of the view in an expression of the, of the calculation in the expression itself, rather than having it be defined by the view. So for example, here, we need to aggregate the uh, amount of free units over the amount of total units at the level of customer to be able to know if there are any customers within an industry that are cheating the system. Okay? 
So in this case, for example, it's easy to see that we have these flags in transportation, one to three dots. Very easy uh, on the eye. They are not intrusive. They're not taking a lot of space in my view, but they're giving me a lot of analytical insights in that one single page. So I can click here on my, on my transportation industry, which overall is doing fine. 3.9 discount rate. If I click on it, I jump to another page. The customers within that industry, I already know there is a problem because it's been flagged by Tableau, by the LOD expression. And I can see that GM and United Continental Holdings and Deer are, are over that threshold. By the way, this data is fake. Don't go and harass these people. Uh, they might be here. They're not having you know, free Tableau, not at all. OK, so how do we build something like that? Let's get out of presentation mode and walk through it. I'm going to start by this very simple visualization. It's a bar chart with the, the, the threshold line. And I'm going to put in a little placeholder. I need somewhere to put my calculation, the little dot there. So I'm just going to use negative 0.005. Uh, That's usually good. Make it a max. And now I have my placeholder. And then I need a calculation to tell me how many customers do I have within those industries that are exceeding the threshold. So I have it here, over threshold, actually no. Here, customers above threshold. Let's zoom in so you can see. Basically, what this is doing is calculating that uh, metric, the sum of free units divided by the sum of total units, at a level that I'm going to decide. Not at the level of the view, which is just industry. I'm fixing that at the level of industry and customer name. Then if I bring that in, here on color, oops, on detail, I will only see those users that have been given too many free units. OK? So then I can just change the mark to a circle, oh, maybe just for that one. Let's give this one a bar. And I've achieved something very, very similar to what we've seen earlier. If I just change this to uh, this times an index, then another, oops, another little trick. Compute it using those customers above the threshold. I can then see exactly how many I have within one of those industries that are exceeding that threshold. So I have defined the aggregation at the level of customer within my expression. Therefore, I'm able to analyze data at a deeper level within a visualization that is at the level of industry. Then with a little bit of formatting, uh, we can get to a level that is very, very similar to what we've seen here, where we have our colors telling us what's wrong within a specific industry, and the little colored dots showing us that there's something wrong at a deeper level. OK, just a little uh, example uh, of traditional usage of LOD, where we're using LOD to define the aggregation. Uh, very, very nice. I, I do recommend this to all of my customers because it's so powerful and, and so easy to do as well. Uh, so let's dive into something a little bit more complex, where we're actually trying to hack the way Tableau works uh, a little bit. So the next example is going to be proportional brushing. And proportional brushing, if you remember uh, what I was saying uh, earlier about Googling stuff, and, and sometimes going crazy uh, about you know, trying to find the right query. This is one of those, those fancy words that are hard, but they actually mean something very simple. Proportional brushing means comparing something to the total. Right? In this case, we have a visualization that gives me a breakdown of my sales by a market. Let's go pick uh, ta -ta -ta, the European Union. And I see the trend of the, the, the sales over time for the market. And what if I want to click on a country, Italy, for example, that's where I'm from, by the way, and see the comparison of sales in Italy to the total of the market. So in this case, I can keep the line, the all line. Let's just unclick that. That doesn't change. It stays there. When I click on Italy, two things happen. I get a nice little line giving me the sales for Italy. The black one stays there. And then I get the chart down there that is just one divided by the other. So I can see that the peak was 28%, the contribution of Italy to the European Union market sales. The peak was July 2013 with 28%. So how do we build something like that? Let's move to the how-to. Now, what I need to do here is use a little trick before we dive into that. This will be the only slide that I will show you today. This is, if you remember one thing 
from this session, please make it this. So there's a certain order that things happen in Tableau. The first thing that we do is we analyze what we call, what are called data source and context filters. That's the first thing in the pipeline of operations. Then we analyze fixed expression. We execute fixed expression. Then dimension filters. Then include exclude LODs. And then everything else. How can I use this to my advantage? Well, I can try to create an expression that will not be filtered. The result of that expression will not be filtered because it will happen before dimension filters. Making sense? Let's do that. So what I need here is to create a calculated field that will give me the fixed to the level of this, the month of order date, sum of sales, and close. And fixed sales. Now when I drag that here, I get exactly the same thing. Why? I have fixed, I have defined manually the level of aggregation of this calculation to be exactly the same as the one I have in the view. So this expression here is calculated at the level of month of order date because that's what's in the view. This one is calculated at that level because I told it to be calculated at that level. The difference is when I apply this filter here and move to the European Union, this one changes. The other one doesn't care because it's evaluated before the filter happens. Now, have I achieved what I wanted to achieve? Do I have the same result that I had in the view before? No, yeah, correct. Close enough. This is already a very interesting use case. Now I'm comparing European Union sales to, um, to uh, the total sales. But what I wanted to do is compare the sales in Italy to the ones in the European Union. So I do have to make this expression care about the filter. How do I do that? Context. So if I change this uh, market filter to be a context filter, the fixed expression will have to take care, to take that into consideration, right? Adding this to context becomes gray. Now they're showing me the same thing. I've selected European Union or EMEA or APAC, whatever. They're showing me the same thing. Now I can uh, 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 dual axis them, maybe synchronize the axis as well. This filter here though, when I select India, this one is not a context filter. So it's not affecting the fixed calculation. So I've, I've used a, a level of detail calculation not to change the level of detail of the view, but to affect the, the order of operation of things and to force Tableau to compute a calculation exactly how I wanted it to be computed. So I find that extremely cool. And that's, that's the theme around uh, most of the things that we're going to see today, trying to, to change the way things work behind the scenes a little bit. Making sense so far? Cool, I see nodding. Okay, the next example, market basket analysis. I find it very interesting because it's traditionally a, a, a data problem. It's a data shape problem, it's a data modeling problem. Having to do market basket analysis, which means when people buy paper, what else do they buy in the same order, is traditionally a data modeling problem. You need to do um, self joins or you need to explode the data, um, and it's, it's kind of messy, it's kind of complicated. In this example, we'll use LOD to be able to achieve this without having to uh, do anything to the data itself. So what happens here, when I click on paper, I get access to a visualization that gives me um, how many orders within uh, copiers and scissors and, and rubbers uh, contained items in paper as well. Kind of makes sense, the highest, you know, when people buy paper, they also buy copiers, go figure. So in this case, it's not revolutionary in terms of analytics, but it's, it's, it is a very cool use case, and it is a very interesting thing to show uh, to your customer or to use as, as your own internal visualization. So how do we do something like this without touching the data structure? Let's go to the how-to. So I'm going to need to do something similar to what we did earlier. I am going to define a fixed calculation. Can you guys read it? Better? Okay at the level of subcategory, exactly the same th thing that I have in the view. Hit OK. Bring that in. Surprise, surprise, it's showing me exactly the same thing that I have. This one is fixed, this one is not, but this, the level of detail is the same because of the level of detail of the view itself. But if you remember, this one couldn't care less about 
filters, dimension filters, unless they're put it into, into context. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a worksheet action. Actually, first, I need to put the order ID in the detail here. There we go. And step marks on. OK. Set up a worksheet action that is going to filter the um, market basket how to passing on select passing the uh, 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 order ID not this the order ID okay so when I click on a category I will pass to the other categories the order ID contained within that bar okay hit okay okay again let's remove order ID from this one we don't need it there so when I click here I'm filtering this one. I'm keeping only the order IDs that contain paper and showing what else has been purchased within those order IDs. The other one doesn't move. Couldn't care less about the filter because it's fixed expression. So you know the rest, right? Dual axis, synchronize, and we get, oh, flip them, and we get to something that is very, very similar to what we had before without touching the data structure at all. Making sense? Are you guys following? Cool. The next one I like because it doesn't really unlock any new insights, but it helps me keep my visualization nice and clean. What is wrong with this viz? You, you, you must have been through some uh, visual analytics best practices session. You must have talked to the Zen masters. What is wrong with this thing? Too many colors on that one. You can't, you can't really tell anything. But the purpose of this dashboard is to allow users to do this. I want to click on the US, and I want to click on Canada, and I want to see the comparison on the line chart. So there is really no other way to have this broken down by the countries than to put that country dimension on color. Or is there? <laughs> OK, so let's take a look at how we can make it better. Wouldn't this be nicer? We see the dashboard. We have the breakdown of the, what is the sales by country. We have the sales, no, actually it's profit, profit over time. Overall, globally. When I click on the country, two countries, now it's broken down by color. I have a threshold here, 20. If I select more than 20, it will give me all. It will not count, OK? If I change this to be 200, not one, 200, it will break it down by color. Because I have selected a number of countries that is less than 200. So how do we do something like this? Let's move to the how-to. OK, so what I need is, first of all, to know how many countries have been selected, right? So how do I do that? If I do a simple count distinct, to count distinct of country, country, what happens? I get a number that goes up and down. Why is that? There are some countries that haven't made any purchases in some months, so they're not counted. So this is not helping. I, I need a single number. So how can I make that a single number? I can fix that, right? So magical curly brackets go around the count distinct, the LOD curly brackets. I'm aggregate, aggregating this measure at the highest possible level of aggregation. Nice flat line, giving me 147 countries, which is the total number of countries that I have in this view, in this data set. Now, I want to know the number of countries that have been selected, not the total number that I have in the, in, in the data set. So when I, when I click on this, what happens? Nothing. 147. Why? Because it's a fixed expression, so it doesn't care about the action filter that I have here. How do I make it care? Context. Yes, you guys are following. Add to context. Now I know exactly, if I deselect this, how many countries have been selected, right? And then if this number, if I like this number, if it's, above, if it's below the threshold, I will display the country. 
If not, I will keep nothing. And I have that in a calculation here, conditional display country, make it bigger. If that counter stream of, of country fixed and with a context filter is less than the drill down threshold that the user can set on top, then break this down by country. Else, nothing. Keep it together. Keep it as one line. This could be whatever. Ah, uh, doesn't matter. Okay? So when I bring this in, we don't need this anymore. When I bring this in, da, 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 on color, if I have selected a number of countries that make sense, that make sense, I will see them. If I select too many, I will not. So nothing new analytically, but something that lets me create a very, very clean visualization uh, and, and gives the user a lot of control over what is going to happen. Cool. Okay, so the next one. Uh, 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 oh, no, this. The next one is everybody's favorite visualization, paths on a map. Everybody loves a path on a map. On a map. Uh, they're not always easy to read for the end user. Uh, if you have too many things, um, they can become very, very messy. So if you have something like this, for example, without a filter, that's just a huge spaghetti mess that no one can make sense of. So it's not nice. What we need is a visualization like this where we can filter, select a country, and see the path. These, by the way, are donations. Donations going from a country to another. So if I select, uh, da, 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 I don't know, what do you like? Italy, again, I will see donations leave in my country. And the Wi-Fi isn't great, so the map isn't loading, but you guys get the idea, okay? So, lots of, lots of you will be wondering, what is so complex about this? I will just bring the country in as a filter, select whatever, let's do United States, and it will work. Except it will not, because Tableau does exactly what it's told, and it filters down to keep only the US. And the target countries are not there anymore. So I get a nice little dot, which you might like, but is not what we were going for, okay? So how do I make it work? This is a totally unfair question because you don't know the structure of the data. So I need to show you that. So if you've built a path analysis on a map before, you will know that what you need is one, yeah, the online map could, could not be loaded. We know that. Um, you need a country field, one single country field, not two with the from and to. And then you need a path field that is telling you from to from Japan to Myanmar, from the United States to Afghanistan. And then you need an edge, an ID, a, a transaction number, a unique identification for that line, okay? So this is how the data is structured. Again, if we go and filter to only keep one country, guess what? We will only see one country and the path will always be the same. That's not what we want. We want to be able to keep all paths, all edges where one of those countries that we have selected in parameter is present, okay? So in this case, moving back to the US for simplicity, I want to keep United States and Afghanistan. I want to keep this edge, okay? So how do I do that? Let's start with a very, very simple calculation that I don't need to explain to you guys. Selected country. This calculation will give me one where there's a match between the parameter and the country, nice and easy, and zero if there's not. Now what I need to do is I need to aggregate this calculation at a higher level, at a level that will give me one wherever, for every edge where there's a country that has been selected in the parameter. And that's exactly what this calculation here does. It's fixed to the level of the edge and it will give me one for every edge where one of the two countries is the one that I have selected. So when I bring this here, fix calc, you can see now that not only do I have a one for this line where the US have been selected, but I also have a one for this line for Afghanistan. 
If I put it on color, it should be easier for you to see. Let's put this one on color. Right? I am keeping as true as once all of those edges, all of those lines, where at least one of the two is the country that I have selected. And this was thanks to the level of detail calculation that I wrote. Okay? So now when I use this one as a filter, not the country, but the, 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 the filter calculation that I've made, and only keep true, I will have accomplished exactly what I wanted to have. So keeping everything, keeping the, the from and the to. If I select a country, I will keep the donor and the recipient. So if we go back to our spaghetti mess, remove this, Oof, way too much stuff, bring in the filter, keep only true, and now we have that nice path that tells me exactly where the money from donors in the U.S. is going. Nice. Okay. The next one, I, it's kind of similar to the, the market basket one in that it helps us solve a traditionally complex data structure, data modeling challenge without touching the data at all. This is a very, very powerful visualization where we have benchmarking. So we're looking at how our company is doing in all of the industries that we sell in, in terms of year over year growth, okay? So we're growing, actually, compared to, to our competitors. So in clothes, shoes, and jewelry, we're growing on average 8.8% more than all of our other competitors, okay? If I select a single competitors, Income Corporation seems to be um, our closest competitors in terms of revenue. So if I click on them, I will see that we're doing fine in most areas, but they're really catching up on clothes, shoes, and jewelry. They're growing a lot faster. We have grown 46.5% less year over year than they have in this specific um, industry segment, um, which is obviously not very good, so we need to address that, okay? So what is the problem with, with creating something like this? Let's take a look at the data structure again so you guys can understand. The way the data is structured here is by having one single um, column with the company where we have our competitors, but also, can I find it for you? Our company. There we go. So our company is part of the data structure just as any other company. So we have the year over year growth metrics for every industry, for every company, including our own, in one single data set. Now the challenge is that traditionally, not just with Tableau, but with any analytical tool, it's easy to compare columns, right? It's very easy. If I had another metric here with the, 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 the year over year growth for my company, it would be very easy to compare this number, 24, with a number next to it in another metric. It would be just a very simple difference calculation. In this case, I would either have to create some crazy uh, table calculation uh, addressing our company, it would be very, very complicated, or I would have to blend. I would have to bring in an additional data source that contains only the information for my company, or I would have to create a join and bring in for every other company the data for our company. So exploding the data, uh, more data volume, slower performance, we don't like that. So how do we fix this? Fix. With a level of detail calculation. How do, can we do this without touching the data, the data structure? So the first calculation, again, trivial. I'm not going to explain that to you guys. I wouldn't want to offend you. It's just selecting our company, okay? If the, 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 the company is equal to our company, then we're seeing the metrics for that company. Now, what we need to do is propagate. These are blanks. We need to have these numbers here as well. Right? For every product category, we want to have the one that belongs to the, the metric, the year-over-year -year growth that belongs to a specific company, and our own right next to it. How do you do that? There's a calculation here called our year-over-year -year growth. Let's make it bigger so you can read. Is that okay? Yeah. So I'm fixing to the level of product category this, clothes, books, music, and so on, the minimum of that metric that I have just calculated, the one that only keeps the value for our company. 
the minimum, the maximum, doesn't matter. I'm comparing this number, the minimum, to a null. So the minimum between this and a null is this, very simply put. So if I bring this here, I, I have now propagated that metric for our company everywhere else. So every other company will have their own metric and our own. And then obviously the difference is trivial. It's that metric minus the, year, the simple year over year growth. And when I bring that in, I have now obtained exactly that type of, of, of insight that I needed. How are we growing compared to others without even touching the data set, without bringing in new data, without blending, without uh, complex joints that explode the information? Right? Making sense? I see nodding. Are you guys tired? Have you had enough? You want some more? Okay, so the next one will be, oh, I like this one because it's, uh, again, trying to hack the way Tableau works. It's changing the default behavior in Tableau. So what's happening here is we have a visualization that gives me um, customers that have purchased in specific quarters that I have selected. Now, the way Tableau works normally when I filter stuff, it's an or filter, right? So when I click on things, look at the one on the right, that's the traditional one. If I click, I add, okay? Customers that have purchased in 2013, Q4, 2014, Q1, and so on. What I need here to know the customers that have purchased consistently in every single quarter is a different type of filter, it's an end filter. Let's play a little game. I've never done this before. Let's try. Hope it works. So stand up if you have a US passport. Just a US passport. OK, I've clicked a filter to show US, right? Stay, stay, stay up, stay up, stay up. Now stand up if you have a passport from an Asian country. Stay up if you have the US, and stand up if you have the Asian one. Nice. So more people have stood up. I have more people now in the room standing up. Now only stay up if you have a US passport and a passport from an, Asian, from an Asian country. Not many, one, two, three, four. That's exactly what I want, that's that. I, I need to keep people that have both. I need an end filter. Thanks for participating, by the way. Uh, so how do I do that? How do I change the default behavior in Tableau? How do I make it behave the way I want it to behave and not the way it wants to behave? With level of detail. Let's move to the how-to. And once again, what I need to know is how many quarters have been selected. And how do I do that? With a count distinct of the uh, 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 quarters. Do I want this? I want the fixed, I want to see the same number, right? So wrap this in magical curly brackets, count distinct of these. Is that right? Yay, 16. That's the total number of quarters that I have. Is that what I want? No, what do I want? The one selected. How do I make this filter apply to the fixed calculation? Add to context, yes. So add this to context, and now I have four, which is what I have selected. Now let's make another calculation. Let's just open the calculation window so it's a little bit easier for you guys to follow. I need the same thing, but fixed at the level of customer as well. I want to know, out of these quarters that I have selected, how many quarters have, has Mr. Raymond purchased in? Okay, so if I fix, fix to the level of customer name, this count distinct of quarters, there we go. Calculation two, let's keep it that way, bring it here. 
what do I get? I get the exact count of how many quarters has this customer purchased in. So if I want to know the customers that I've purchased in every single quarter out of the ones that I've selected, what do I have to do? Yeah, I need to match them. I need to, I need to see those cases, those people where the, where the number is the same. This guy has purchased in four quarters out of the four quarters that I've selected. He has purchased, he or she, in all of the quarters that I have selected. So if I just bring this here, equals this, it doesn't work. <laughs> I need to do it here. So actually, let's edit this one. This one needs to be equal. The count distinct, ah, equals the count distinct of order the eight quarters. That's all right. Calculation two, okay. Get rid of it and bring it in again. Now it's a true false. So it gives me true. Let's put it on color actually. Wherever the number is the same, right? So now, if instead of putting that on color, I use this thing as a filter, only keeping true, I will have achieved exactly what I wanted to achieve, which is a filter that only keeps the customers that have purchased in every quarter that I have selected. So if I select five, six continuous quarters, the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller because I have less people that have obviously purchased in, in all of the quarters that I have. Okay, I'm going quickly. Do we have any questions for now? Yeah. Uh, if I don't do that, so the question is, I wrapped the, um, the uh, calculation in um, the, the county, so yeah, this bit, let's do it again. This bit here. The count D, count D. The filter that I have in the filter shelf, which is the calculation two. This one is wrapped around, okay. The, the result of that calculation without the curly brackets would be the same. But look what happens. Everybody's favorite error, right? I am trying to match a row level calculation, which is affixed to this. Cannot mix, aggregate, and non-aggregate, blah, blah, blah. Have you seen that before? <laughs> so that's what happens. And that's why I have to, to fix that. But good catch, because it, it, analytically, it's exactly the same as not having it, because I have it in the view. Exactly. That's what I did. <laughs> I got the error, and then I fixed it like this. Thank you. There's one there. There's a microphone there as well, if you want to. No, it's fine, it's fine. Be loud. Uh, the trick is you are adding uh, the filter to the context, right? Yes. And to my understanding, whenever we add something to context, it's a temp table in the backend memory that gets created. Uh -huh. So if I have huge data sources, then it's going to be a big performance issue. That is almost correct. <laughs> okay. So that, yeah. When I add a filter, traditionally, it, it worked exactly like that. It before 10 point, for 10. Okay. So whenever you added something to the context, it would cre it created a, a temporary table with just that uh, subset of the data, okay. right? Um, and that can, can ca cause some performance issues. That's correct. Uh, the way it works in 10 now, it's a bit smarter than that. And most of the times, it will behave exactly like a data source filter. Okay. So it would happen before in the pipeline. It would be a, like a where clause that is everywhere uh, in every query, wrapped around every query. But it will not create a temp table. Only in some instances, it creates a, a temporary table. I do not know what those instances are. But you can find out in the performance recorder. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Another one. Let's do another one. 
I saw an a hand over there. There. Sorry? Let's go back to our company, the benchmarking. There we go. It's just a filter. So the way, the thing that we got, so the, the question is, uh, how do I make it uh, show the percentage for income, right? Um, if I don't have anything in the, in the dimension, the one that in the, in, the, in the view as a dimension, the one we have here, what will happen? Removing product category, this thing gets aggregated. So it's showing me me versus everybody else, averaged, sort of. Uh, so it's calculated at the level of the entire um, data set. Then if I filter, if I click on something like income, it will only show the data for income. So now I'm comparing, going back to this, where I have, back, 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 where I have this in the view, it will only filter down to have income. So the result is this, right? Where I have my company and just income. How? Oh. Oh, that's new. That's, that's great, actually. I like that. So the question is, can I compare our company? In this case, our company, I'm comparing our company to everybody else. But I would like to be able to compare income to everybody else or another company to everybody else. The only thing that you would need to change to achieve that is the first calculation. If you remember, we have a calculation that gives us this. If company equals our company, then give me the metric. But if you change this to a parameter where you can specify the company dynamically, then you've, you've like added a lot of value to this visualization. Thank you for that. That's cool. I like it. Are you guys following? So we don't necessarily want to compare our company to everybody else. We might want to know, okay, how is income doing compared to, 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 to the other competitors? And if we make this dynamic by changing the, 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 the fixed text that we have here to a parameter, then it's, it's a lot more valuable. Thank you. OK, I can quit stalling now. 15 minutes to go. Uh, I have one last example for you. It's sort of a bonus example that I keep here because it's cool. Um, so we've, we've been working on that. There have been a few announcements on, I don't know, we're going to bring it to the product. I don't know if you talk about it in the, in the um, uh, devs on stage this year because I couldn't see it because I was working. I will see the recording. Um, but something that everybody wants is this. I have a nice little map with the states, and I click on the state, and I keep only, and it drills down, and I don't have to explode the map and change anything. So that's something that a lot of people are asking for. It's a very popular topic on the community. It's a very popular idea. It's been there for a while. So we will we'll at some point have a very nice and easy zoom in, and it will just work. But for now, we can fix it with LOD, which is really, really cool. So. The way this is achieved is very, very similar to some other, um, so to another example that we've seen before. So I have a show or hide city here that counts the states. The drill down threshold here is defined as 49, which they tell me is the number of the states in the continental US. Is that correct? <laughs> Um, so if it is 49, then show me, if it's less than 49, it means someone has selected one of these states or multiple states, and I want to drill down and show the city information, else do nothing. Then I also have another one that's show or hide state, where if it's bigger than the threshold, it means bigger or equal. It means nothing has been selected, which means I need to show the state. OK? So instead of having the city in this one, which is the city level one, I will bring in the show or hide city. There we go. And in the other one, I will bring the show or hide state instead of state. Right? Then if I select this one, keep only, 
it doesn't work. Why not? I have a fixed calculation. I'm trying to count things. What do you need to do? This is always the same thing. Context. Yes, if I add this one to context, this will show up. This go away, and this show up. And then when I have them as a dual axis, we get exactly that behavior that we've seen earlier, where show this one as a filter, bring it back to all. It shows everything. Go to California, keep only. Boom. Drill down to the next level and see the cities. Nice? Cool. OK, so we do have a few more minutes for Q&A. But before we do that, I have lied to you. We are not going to see this only once. We're going to see it twice. This is not the only slide that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show it to you again because it's important, because this is the, the, the main thing that we've learned today, right? There is an order of operations that thing happen in, in Tableau. 95% of the times, everything is super easy. You don't have to be aware of this. You can just do your thing, analyze your data, and Tableau will work and will, will do exactly what you want it to do. For the remaining 5%, the complicated things, the advanced analytics, the Jedi stuff, you need to be aware of these things. Being aware of this is a massive advantage because you can play with the order of things, uh, with context filters, with fixed expressions, and so on. And this, as you've hope hopefully seen with these examples, unlocks a world of possibilities and, and analytics. So again, data source and context filters, going back to your question earlier, uh, they are put in the same bucket because they're essentially the same thing most of the times. So they're there. They happen at the same time. And most of the times, they do exactly the same thing in the, in the SQL. Yes? Fast? First, uh, they, they're at the same level at the, at, as the context, exactly at the same. As far as I'm aware, in, in 10, it's like that. They're pretty much the same thing. Uh, but uh, yes, if you have both in a view, the data source one will execute first. Yes. Then we evaluate fixed expressions. Meaning if you have a fixed expression and a dimension filter that is not added to context, it will not impact. That filter will not impact the calculation. Then we evaluate dimension filters. Then include exclude LODs, which you haven't really used today. Uh, but uh, it's, it's worth to know that they're different from fixed in that they're evaluated after dimension filters. So that's important to know. If you're using an include, most of the things that we've done today will not work. So you need the fixed. To, to, to do that little trick with the dimension filters. And then, of course, we have the rest. The rest meaning uh, other, other um, expressions that are not fixed or, or not LODs in any way. And then uh, the last thing is always the table calculations, which are computed locally on the result set of what we have already achieved. So the question is, the question is there, is there any other, so fixed versus include. Is, so is there any other consideration that we have to make before deciding to use a, a fixed or include? Uh, usually the main factor is filters, right? Again, uh, if you have, this is usually a side effect. Now we, we've used it to our advantage, but a side effect of fixed calculation is that you need to have every dimension in the expression for it to be relevant when you filter stuff. With the include, you don't. So if you include um, the customer name, for example, like we did in the, um, in the, um, in the first example, uh, and you aggregate stuff at the level of customer name, uh, what will happen is um, if you add a filter that you hadn't considered before, it will still be evaluated because it happens before. So if you plan on having filters in your dashboard and you can use include and not fixed, that's usually better. Outside of filters, not really. Uh, the other thing is that fixed expressions are row level and they return dimensions. So they're row level information every time. Uh, 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 okay, so 
Sorry, a lot of people are leaving and I need to, to show these. So there's a repeat tomorrow. If you want to come see me again, I would be more, more than happy to. Or if you want to recommend this to people, please do. Uh, also, there are related sessions that I think are really cool. The first one is uh, Understanding LOD Expressions by Bora Baron, who is basically the guy who invented LOD expressions. So he knows a little bit more than I do about them, just a little. Uh, and the next one is, the other one is LOD Expressions versus Real World. That's a hands-on session. So if you feel like you want to play with them a little bit, uh, that class is given by my very good friend Bronson Schonk. He's very, very good. I can only recommend that you go there if you want to play a little bit uh, with those. Uh, the feedback. The feedback is super important to me, especially if you like the session. Uh, <laughs> give it a, a nice rating. If you did not, please uh, comment and, and tell us how we can make it better. Uh, we do have a little bit more time for Q&A, but if, uh, if anybody wants to, uh, wants to go and, and watch the, the, the last keynote, uh, feel free to. You're free to leave now. Thank you.